What's up guys? Project time. So this truck had an air horn. Problem with it is is that it was bolted to the original factory bracket. You can see that factory bracket snapped clean off. Too much weight. Uh, what I had was actually two air horns in one. It's part of the valve body of this one. So these three big ones and then one little guy right in the middle. Um, if I go over here, you can kind of see this is what it's supposed to look like. And then I just added a second one for a total of five. Um, bracket snapped. Thing fell down, went under the axle, and got pretty mangled up. So these three are damaged. I'm just not even going to bother with them. That one's pretty crushed there. I mean, they could still be reused, but it's, it's going to affect it. This is still good. Uh, this one here just got nicked on the end because it was in kind of the inside of it. It didn't really get hurt. Um, I just took it off. I had this one in here like this. I may do this one again or not. Uh, my primary deal right now is just to get an air horn back onto here. Um, this is the one piece out of the three trumpets that was still salvageable, the valve body and the top trumpet. These two here, I mean, I could probably salvage them, but it's still gonna be an issue. This one here got smashed in. I don't know if it got cracked, doesn't look like it. And then one of these got chewed up on the side, so just didn't want to deal with too much air leaks. Plus, to me, it's damaged, so I don't want to mess with it. All right, so let's go over here to the side of the truck where we're going to get started. Just kind of covering stuff here. So first things first, I got to take off the shield. Millimeters. 12 millimeter bolts. There's a handful of them. I'm gonna leave that one for last. I'm gonna take out this one, and I'm gonna take out this one. And now I'm gonna take out this one. Okay, now I can pull the shield out, and that's just gonna give me room to work. Uh, <laughs> Let me make sure, nope, see there's a hole. Normally I would set the bolts up here, but there's a hole right there. So I'm just gonna set them up here. Okay, so this is the bracket. This is the factory air horn bracket. It's 3 16 steel. Uh, obviously it's not enough. So we need to, I'm going to leave the radiator support piece. It is kind of integral because they're doing double duty with it. There's a radiator support attached to it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this flat and then I'm gonna mock up, I'll show you here in a second, the, um, I'm gonna mock up the bracket with, I'm trying not to get that decal in the video, but, oh well. I'm gonna mock it up with the uh, air horn bracket itself and put that on there. Um, I'll have to do some modifications to the air horn bracket the reason I took the bracket off of this horn, and I'll show you why here in a second, is because when you get these, the bracket comes like this. However, for my application, I need it to go up behind that piece, so I'm going to need to flip it over and have it like this. Now, I'm debating if I'm going to use this bracket, or if it is identical to this one, then I may just cut this one. And I'll have one original bracket that I won't have to mess with. So is it identical? Not quite. So this whole here that the valve body goes through is different. And the same horn, same brand, it's just one's older than the other one is. But this is also gusseted so it won't, you know, snap off in a sense. That's kind of the idea. So let's get up in here and get this other bracket off well we're going to use this one now need to find the right size socket for those i have a little bag here of just some sockets period i don't think it's going to be any of these but i'll grab them anyways and 
could have swore I grabbed a box wrench, but yeah, I think I set it up on the step. All right, let's get up over here. And there's two bolts holding this on. There are nuts behind the frame. I just don't remember if, taking this off before, I just don't remember if I need to hold the nuts from behind or if they're welded. I guess we'll find out. It looks like that's about our size. What is that? It is a 15. Let's see if I get a 14 in here. Probably not. That's a 13. All right. So it's probably a 14. I'm using a 15. I'm going to check from behind. Ooh, they're on there tight. Okay, so you do have to hold the nuts from behind. That one's out. I'm going to set these off to the side so I know where they can keep track of those. All right, let's try that one again. Okay, it does not want to go on its own. No problem. We're going to help it. <laughs> try out my new ratchet. Tractor Supplies Finest for $13.99. Extendable half inch drive and three eighths drive. Double headed ratchet. <laughs> Finest China has to make. This thing needs some oil. <laughs> yeah, it does. So, we put that on there. Typical Chinese crap. <sighs> well. And, yeah, see what happens when you use the wrong size socket, you strip off. All right, so, I need to find a 14. I don't think I have one in that bag. It is a 14, though. Yeah, no 14 here. Those are definitely not 14. That is an 18. <laughs> So like one of the first videos ever I made on this, I uh, know oh this is the Stanley, I was gonna say the Husky Ratchet, but that's not even Husky, that's Stanley. All right, well, that means I have to go into my truck and get my socket set out. Let's, no, that's a 13. This is my like throw together set that I just have for the truck. So it's a 12. So in here I have a regular set of sockets. Let's grab ourselves a 14. Okay, so we've got 14 right here, I believe. That is a 14. Okay. So we got 14. We're gonna use the we're going to try out that Harbor Freight one again, but first case is I'll come back to my uh, my Stanley. I still have the Husky one that I made my first YouTube video on years back. Still works. Minus that, uh, I think, that one piece of tooth. It still works. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is yeah, see... I'm going to do it upward. Okay, we're turning. One thing I like about these extendable ratchets is the factor that you can uh, get the leverage. All right, so I think we're undone on that one. Yes, we are. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take this guy off here. Okay, what do I have here? I have a have a bracket that is attached to this okay so this is a push button I believe yes yes it is that pull that or a pull button you pull a little tab and it slides out they just cheesily welded that to the back of this thing this is like some cheap steel so 
What I'm gonna do is, see where that rust line is? I'm just gonna cut this thing off. I'm gonna take a grinder to it and I'm gonna cut it clean off so that we have a flat piece. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mock this up to here, like this, preferably. And see, except for that's not gonna give me I want to be able to bolt it through both. Yeah, it can be kind of an issue. This is not wide enough. This one I don't think is any wider. Nope. Okay, well, we're going to get both. But it may only be able to... May have to go smaller. I don't know. Either way, it'll be notched out and they'll hold it. And then uh, I have to cut out this big area for that main bolt to fit through, which for that, well, I have a hole saw. So let's get started on getting this thing flat. Let's remember which one I'm supposed to be using here. That's this one. Okay. I got a piece of steel too. I can always... Oh, I mean, <laughs> that was what my secondary bracket was, but see, it was just too much weight hanging on thing. I think that's what it was, mostly what it was. So anyway, we need to get this thing trimmed, get rid of this old piece of crap. So I'm going to just debating here. <laughs> I just need to clamp it. Uh, I want to use the edge of the bed, but obviously in an area that I don't cut my pliers. So, okay, that'll that'll work. Mm, get a little tighter, get a little straighter. It's gonna be a spark show. Okay, that'll hold it. All right, so I need to grab my grinder. Uh, let's see here, a million dollar question, do I use the plug-in one or do I use the battery powered guy? I think we're just going to go with the battery powered guy. Might take a little longer, but okay. Got the big 14K chop saw. I don't think I'm going to need that. I think we'll be just fine without them. Uh, I do need to grab my keys though because I can't open my toolbox, my GoPro box. Try not to make these videos too drown out, but kind of how it goes sometimes. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking of you guys. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, just that yeah, goes as it goes sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I don't quite get it all done that quickly. I have the idea in mind what I want to do. How long it's going to take to do it? the big question now before I get totally into cutting and grinding I need to grab some safety glasses uh, yeah those will work don't work with a hard hat too well and got our grinder here Need to change that wheel. This is what's called a, like a toolless change. Uh, they have tools for it, but uh, you shouldn't have to. Um, just grab the wheel basically and twist it while it's locked. It usually works. Okay, we're gonna come back for that uh, other wheel, a sanding disc wheel. But for right now, we're gonna use this guy. Okay, so we're gonna cut this right about here. Kind of see when start the game.
is why you don't put your hands next to that thing. Granted, some safety Nazi will comment, where's my guard? There it goes. <laughs> Just like that, one broken piece cut off. All right, now let's change this wheel. Probably should take the, ah, hands not on the trigger. Why would I bother taking the battery out? Don't need this cut off disc anymore. And I could leave it like that, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna grab the flap disc. These are kind of good. The only thing I hate about these things is once it wears through that beginning edge, sometimes it doesn't go all the way down and wear off the material. So you wind up with half a wheel that's just not usable. And I'm just gonna clean it up with this. Yes, I know the battery's starting to die, but that's actually not the battery's fault. That's my fault because I haven't uh, <laughs> haven't charged that battery in a good minute. Okay, so with this side here, I'm gonna have to clamp this thing a different way, mainly due to the factor that that little bracket on the back side is kind of in the way. We're only gonna be sanding it, so don't need to get too crazy with it. I do still need this bracket because that's holding my radiator support and I don't want to lose that. You know, plus it holds that little tab. So, okay. I can get rid of my safety glasses for the moment. And let me back to double checking which bracket I have there. If this one doesn't fit, then I have the right bracket. Either. Okay. So here's my correct bracket. I'm going to grab a marker sharpie makes good markers milwaukee came out with these things of course made in the people's republic of china um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to line this thing up uh, i need it to be below let's go right about there with it just need the horns. I need this thing to be below a little bit just so it clears that uh, that shield. That's why I'm going upwards with it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just eyeballing it. it. Doesn't have to be freaking perfect. I do want that to be flush with that. All right, so. Yeah, looks about as straight as it's going to look. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> May have to do it. I have the horns at an angle. All right, let's go mock this thing up on the truck here real quick and see. Because I had, I had the horns at an angle. And the reason I had them at an angle is so they clear the bumper. Um, it's obviously probably won't be that big of an issue, seeing as, you know, if I mount it like that, my worry is it's going to be too close to something. I mean, I could come over here, can utilize that hole. Well, yeah, see, if I do it, if I do it like that, though, I can get the bolt holes just right. At least the mounting holes for the bolts. And I think that one's going to be 
bit tall. Let's look on the back of this thing. All right, so if I stick with that mounting hole, yeah, but see, I have to cut into here. I don't like that. So what if I do it like this? Flush mount that, flush mount that. Okay. Well, we'll test fit it. If I screw this up, I have one more bracket I can use. I just have to make that valve body portion bigger. So I'm gonna mark a circle here where this is. And this isn't really that big. It's a freaking bolt. Actually, what the hell is that bolt holding? That bolt is holding my crossbar. All right. So we're not gonna use that bolt. We're gonna make sure we cut a nice hole to clear that bolt. Okay, so I have my holes. Um, got some drill bits here. Got a drill. Probably not the world's best drill, but got a drill. And I'll have to go get that hole saw. I need to center that hole and get it mocked straight or get a center line on it so that I can get it going just right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take this guy back over here. Probably should do a center punch. I know. I'm going to comment it. Uh, don't really have one. I don't have one with me. Oh, I have one. I just don't have it with me. Okay, so let's start with. Start with that hole. I'm gonna use the bed to hold it. Oh man, okay. Got a little too much. Okay. Start with that hole and these oh, what? Freaking Milwaukee piece of shit. Ah, uh, well, I didn't buy it, so I'm not com really complaining. I bought the battery. That was it. Found the drill. So I'm going to try to center this as best I can. Oh, you can hear that bit. It's saying I'm done. Oh, yeah. Hoping you can see what I see. Woo! She almost didn't want to do that. And while I've got it here before I move it, and I've got this drill bit still in here, just going to kind of start it off there. So this is why you would normally use A center punch because bits walk and this bit's chewed the fuck up chewed up bad trash well that's why we're stepping too because these bits are all you know drill bits don't last forever unfortunately and with the cheap cost of chinese crap now it's not even worth sharp trying to sharpen these things and just buy new ones use the crap out of these things already. I mean, must have drilled about a hundred holes in steel. <laughs> well, is what it is. All right, I have a quarter inch bit right here. I'm pretty sure this thing is doll AF. <laughs> no, actually that's pretty good. I'm going to try not to curse in this video. I'm trying really hard here. Um, YouTube, for some reason, is demonetizing my videos if I'm uh, too vocal about it. You know, too vocal in there. You know, advertisers don't want you saying the F-bomb a lot of times. I 
I've just come to the realization they're either going to monetize it or they're not. And they're still playing those games, so. All right, and I'm going to say three eighths. Uh, let's check these. Well, that's actually probably a half inch, but I think I only need to go three eighths. No, it's not quite half. Okay, so we're going to do three eighths, and then we'll see where that gets us. If we have to modify anything a little bit, we will. Um, because we're already cutting into that as we just did. so the trick to doing this now is get your bit spinning yeah that might be off kilter a wee bit all right we'll hit that with the uh Little grinder wheel real quick. <laughs> the grinder wheel, it's going dead. I should be able to center this one for the whole saw. I was a little worried about that, trying to make sure that uh, I wasn't too far centered with that. Yes, for safety's sake, don't hold shit in your hand while you're doing it with the grinder. <laughs> Somebody will probably get me for that too. <laughs> okay, clamp down. That one bit was already trashed. This battery is almost dead. This is a fun day, huh? I have another battery. It's probably got some juice in it. Mm. Okay, that's not going to work. We still need to pilot drill that. So let's grab whatever I got here that's the biggest I can pilot drill it with. It's actually better on your drill bits if you do step this, it just means you have to change out more often. The reason that is is because your bits don't have to chew so much and they have a little bit of a relief in the middle for the chips to go. Um, I'm obviously not caring too much about these bits because see how nice that bit is, huh? Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I'm not putting that back in. I'm <laughs> throwing that bit away once we're done with it. Trying to keep it centered. All right, let's grab that quarter inch again. Now, as you get the bigger bits, they are uh, slotted on the side for these three jaw chucks so that they hold right in there. See, Milwaukee is flashing because that battery is almost toast. I started with two bars, huh? This is the 12 volt deal. I'm a DeWalt guy, as you can see I have DeWalt tools. Their batteries tend to hold up a little bit more. However, my Milwaukee impact gun is way better than DeWalt's. So there's, there's a bit back and forth. Uh, haven't had too much issues with the uh, 18 volt uh, red looking battery. What's going on here? Oh, we're going to have an issue with this one, aren't we? Yeah. Three eighths is dull. Okay, let's go over to the tow box. This is why you wind up with more than one set in your toolbox because of that fact. You're also going to grab the freshly charged Milwaukee battery. I'm going to try to get as much chooched out of that one before I switch off. Okay, so yeah, see, you wind up with more than one of these stupid things because at the cost of these bits, 
It's actually just cheaper to buy a whole new set. That's three eighths. What did I grab? Three eighths? Yes. Yeah, it's actually ones that being cheaper to buy a whole set because I think just the three eighths and a half inch bit alone are in that realm of ten to fifteen dollars. Whereas a set of these things is like thirty bucks. Ninety percent of the time, I do not need all these little ones, but like I says, I'll pilot them. So, yeah. All right, I know. One of these quarter inch bits is shot. Okay, so that three eighths bit's good. Those bits are trash. Um, <laughs> yeah, that quarter quarter inch bit's burned. Well, let's find out which one of these actually works the best, huh? Easy way to find out. I've got my crap piece of steel actually. Let's do this. Let's grab that broken piece. Then we're going to see which one chooches the best. Okay. So one of these I know is dull. And one of these is new. That I did buy a new quarter inch bit. No chip fall. Quarter inch bit that's new or sharp should cut right into it with no pilot hole. Okay, that one's got a good sharp edge. So let's chuck that. <laughs> I'm just saying, let me uh, let me pluck what I need to pluck out of here. The five sixteenths. Well, these are identical sets. Okay, so. See what goes where, that one goes there, does it? It is 3 sixteenths. Sometimes you can still read it on these things. That's 3 sixteenths. So that's 3 sixteenths, that should fit right into there. And then I think, <laughs> that one's broken. <laughs> So all I've got left in here, this set that's not junk, is these two. We know that 3 8 bit is shot, so. An empty set. <laughs> and we'll just put our leftover bits. Oh, we'll hang on to these two. I know they're good. Okay, so. <laughs> it's time to retire, you guys. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm going to keep this out so I can pilot whole that thing for the whole saw. Uh, <laughs> Milwaukee puts this thing on the back of these. This little nut insert so you can screw on a magnet or a clip. However, good luck finding those accessories. But they still make these stupid things with them. I don't understand why. Uh, that's trash now it is. Oh, that's now trash. Actually, these are scrap metal. So what I'm going to do here is put them in scrap. <laughs> While I'm doing that, I need to get my keys to open my toolbox. I lost the key for this stupid thing. Milwaukee, or I'm sorry, it's a Husky product. Husky doesn't even offer key replacement. They tell you, go online. To one of their affiliated websites one of the people that you know makes crap for them and you can get the key from them well they charge you ten dollars for one key it's ridiculous I'm not paying ten dollars for one freaking key and that is a one inch hole okay so here's my million dollar question will that be big enough Will that be big enough? Let's go put this onto there. Now let's see how centered that thing is. That'll be a first question, I guess. How centered is that deal there? I don't know why they didn't bolt that through the bracket, but I guess they chose not to. So it is up and to the right. 
Yeah. Well, we're not getting through that, are we? Mm-mm. We're gonna need a bigger hole saw. It's about a quarter inch shorter in diameter, though, but that's bigger than that one inch. I mean, I'm thinking that's probably like a two inch. Yeah, inch and a half. Okay, so I need to go buy a new hole saw before I can even finish this project. Awesome. Good thing Home Depot closes at 9 and 10. It is 8 o'clock. Okay. Uh, I don't know why. Laguna Hills Home Depot closes earlier than other Home Depots do. Okay, well, since I got the company name involved in this video now, I mean, I try not to do that. So, I'm going to give you guys a little brief on the laws for air horns. It's called a highway horn, meaning freeway, freeway use only. Where it's harder to hear a regular horn, granted people can't hear a regular horn to save their butts these days, but where traffic and noise makes it harder to hear a regular horn, higher speeds, etc., that's where these horns are allowed. They're not legal to be blowing them on a city street when you're at a red light. Uh, plus, it's obnoxious, so I try not to be that way to people. Anywho, uh, I need to go get a new hole saw, so we will come back. Okay, we're back. Got back from Home Depot. I'm gonna swap these batteries out. Take this one off. I believe it's dead. Yeah, it's dead. All right, so we got a couple of goodies at Home Depot. Put this guy on my charger, and same thing with this guy. Got a battery here that's fully charged, so we're good to go. So I had to take my other ones back because the little rivet here that holds the release tab broke. Uh, no problem there, they exchanged them. And I wasn't sure what size hole I wanted to cut that, so I got two hole saws, Milwaukee hole dozers, a one and three quarter and a two inch. As well as in the event I need them, I got longer bolts. They didn't have class seven, they only had class five, which is standard bolts. Um, but I think we should be okay. So without slicing my damn fingers up, get this thing open here. <laughs> Love the packaging. Not always a big fan of it though. Alright, let's just drop that knife there for a minute. <laughs> Don't want to cut ourselves accidentally. I'm gonna crack these open. You can buy the saw or the whole saw with the little by itself for already go dropping shit. You can buy the whole saw and then buy the mandrel separate. The whole saw is like 12 bucks, and the man or the this thing here that goes in the back, the quick release, is $21. Both of these whole saws are about $12 a piece, 12, 13 bucks. Then you got to buy the little mandrel. So if I bought two of these and the man and the and the and the chuck attachment there, we were talking like 40 bucks when these were like $15 together. So it was actually just cheaper to buy them in the combination kit like this. U.S. General, yes, Harbor Freight's finest. <laughs> I would buy Snap-on, but I think Snap-on is overpriced. I mean, they got some quality tools, but even their shit's kind of uh, getting cheap. Uh, cut away from you. <laughs> Don't cut towards yourself. Um... I just bought a box for the, to have here at the shop, so I wasn't going to buy a big old expensive toolbox. Plus, I can never see myself spending $10,000 on a freaking toolbox. My toolbox at home, which is at Milwaukee, I spent $550 on. So you go to think if I'm going to spend $8,000, $10,000 on a freaking toolbox. I'll recycle this crap. That'll go in our cardboard bin. All right, going to need these. Uh, should be able to just do, the, do that. Yep. That's why they zip time. They go through all this 
deal to freaking like seal this packaging. And I put one zip tie holding it on. Just make it easier for everybody. Jeez. Okay, so we got our two hole saws. Got this. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. I got a nail set too. That I got. Um, they didn't have a center punch. It's the closest thing they got to a center punch. So we're going to use this instead. Um, cardboard recycle. Trash. Okay, so let's grab these. Grab our battery and let's grab this. And then I have to figure out where the heck I put my tape measure, which I think, yeah, I left it over there. Okay. All right. So the nail set will work. If it's really an issue. I can take it on the little sanding disc there and put a point on it, which I'll probably actually do that. Grab my little safety glasses here. Do this, let's do this. And voila, we have a point. Nice sharp point too. That'll work. Alright, ditch these safety glasses for a sec. I need to grab the tape measure because I need to center that thing. So, well, grab the tape measure, don't grab the tape measure. I'm not sure on that yet. I could actually use my impact gun on this, but I'm not sure how well that would work with these. Don't know if they'll even fit. No, they're not impactable. Okay, so I was thinking about this. Probably the easiest way I can do this is this is two inch. Take that guy out of there. And let's put it down here like this. Now is that a two inch hole? Nope, it's not not two inch. Wasn't sure what size it was gonna be. So this is inch and three quarter. Eh, it's about inch and three quarter. Okay. So we're not gonna need the two inch. Let's put that guy back into there. Have that just in case though. So, here's my going to be my little trick at this. I'm going to set that thing up, line that up in the hole right there. I'm going to take my Sharpie. I'm just going to make a round hole like that. <laughs> now, I can do this a couple ways. I can take a tape measure, measure out the hole, which is about a half inch. Yeah, it's about a half inch. All right, so I'm gonna make a mark, just like that. And we'll do the same thing here. Mark across like that. And that's where our center is. Take that. That reduces it down in size. I decided I wanted to center punch this one because make it a little bit easier to keep this thing straight so it doesn't walk on me and there we go <laughs> and our tip kind of held up <laughs> okay can beat the crap out of that thing some more and it looks like we are going to be using that size so I'm a big fan these days of doing pilot holes so let's do a pilot hole first things first let's clamp our piece and my other one's broke. Uh, Home Depot took them back, no problem. This little pin here that holds the release lever, it's pinned over here. It's not like the rest of these where they're full on riveted on both sides, rounded on both sides. It's pinned over and it broke loose. It broke. Um, so there's, you know, strike one for Milwaukee. Or a strike for Milwaukee. One thing I like about these is, okay, these handles right here, these things, you can put some serious torque on these things. I can lock it in like that. Drop my workpiece. I can lock it in. Yep. 
And I can take a wrench or a screwdriver and put it in there and crank it harder if I want to. Which is kind of which is kind of cool. Uh, this is not a tool review. We're putting air horns on a truck. Or redoing the air horns on a truck. This thing doesn't clamp for, for spit sometimes though. That's one issue I have with this Milwaukee gun. Do need to kind of keep that center away from that edge because when this drill bit hits that thing, it's going to create an issue. Which one is this? Ascension three quarter? Okay. Let's hope that doesn't become a problem. Eh, it walked. Oh well. It's okay. That thing's off to the side of the anyway. Okay, you little sucker. There we go. I'm gonna pilot that. Oh yeah, that's exactly what happened. It walked. Son of a biscuit. All right, all right. Yep, we need to pilot drill that a little more. We're gonna have fun holding the saw in place. Oh yeah. I got a slight feeling it ripped my glove. Yes, it did. Well, you know, nitrile gloves rip easily. That's why I typically don't use them, but yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> my boss. He always gives me crap for these things when he watches the videos. Uh, like, can you at least buy some better gloves, man? No, I was like, eh. They all do that. These these things weren't meant to be doing what I'm doing here. I don't think any of them were. Even the latex ones I get. Although I like the latex ones a little better because they're a bit more forgiving. All right, so let's pilot this. Okay, that's piloted. Okay, so what the hell? I don't know the stupid thing flashing. Okay, well, it's starting to cut where it's supposed to. I need to get another one of these and clamp this thing down a little harder. And I will change this glove out now that it's ripped up. I will probably change them both out. All right, take it by. Truck full of tools. I've got a smaller one. So we're gonna use that guy on the other side. That apparently is not clamping hard enough. And I'll show you what I mean about the screwdriver thing on these. So these are the gloves I normally get. The diamond grips, uh, they're seven mil thick, pretty decent, flexible, heavy latex. I don't care what color they are. I just care they don't rip, but it is inevitable that you are gonna rip a glove. And they do vary from batch to batch. See, a lot more flexible than those junky nitrals are. Those are some Gorilla gloves I bought from Home Depot. So you take the screwdriver, put it through there, crank it like that. Now let's tie it on there. I take this one and do the same thing. I don't have a vise, otherwise I would have put this in a vise. I'm clamping it to the edge of the bed. There's a flat part right here on the edge where they have the pieces welded. I'm just going to crank that over. There we go. Now I can concentrate on holding this thing 
And you know what? I'm going to get some oil. I find that does tend to help. I've got two kinds. I've got this gel stuff I just got from WD-40, or I bought from Home Depot. And I've got the regular old uh, WD-40. Uh, let's try the gel, see how that works. See if that stays on here better. Comes in like this foamy stuff here. But I find when you put oil on bits and stuff like that, they tend to work a wee bit better. So right now I'm just going to get stuck. drill something's up with a stupid drill all right let's slow it down that's sensing torque or some crap i don't know i don't know what's going on with this maybe i need to put it in torque mode oh. see there right, we are going through some quick steel What these things are is keep them at a lower speed. I like to kind of go at a little bit of an angle, it kind of cuts a little bit. our hole dozer hmm, it's about on the hot side hole dozer actually looks like okay we lost a tooth right there and kind of so we lost one tooth but it looks like we're fine I mean we can still keep going I'm sure if I take a little easier with this thing it wouldn't be so bad all right so <laughs> Much as I'm tempted to wipe that off with my glove, let's get a rag or something. Get a junky rag here. All right, let's do that. Let's wipe that off with this. Oh, I'll just wipe off that oil, you know what I mean? Ooh, left a gnarly edge. Pretty typical. I have a file. So I'm gonna get that out. What I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm gonna take this. I'm just gonna go around it. Clean it up a little bit. Um, I can unclamp this or I can loosen it up and then unclamp it. It's a little bit less on my hands if I just loosen it up first. All right, now this might be a little interesting to get into. That's probably where we broke where I broke that tooth. Uh, so let me clamp the thing back down here. Let's just clamp it like that. I don't need to have it crazy clamped, or at least I don't need to do both. Just do the one.
I actually pretty much took off my burr. You see what I mean? I pretty much took off my burr. I got a little bit more of a burr. I'm going to clean up on that though. So let's get a file. Um, I have one here, but I've got to move. Big head welder. For cheap, it's not a bad uh, chop saw. Home Depot special for 200 bucks. All right. Cheapy cobalt file. These things are kind of garbage, but oh well, that's what happens when you buy them. You gotta deal with it. So, I think what I'll do is I'll clamp this thing back down and then hit it with the file. Clamp it down. Clamp it down this way. Get in there and just go around. There was a spot here that had an extra piece. I think I'd already just knocked that off. Just go around just to make sure you bird. Yeah. Can't really get in there with anything, so those are drill bits. bird okay moment of truth let's find out if this is gonna work all right so this is the front side this is the outside we're obviously gonna bolt through and it actually looks like a freaking thing lines up perfectly all right so I got one bolt right here I did have to drill that out a little bigger Another bolt right here, and that actually should do it. Where is well, the socket for these is on the wrench over there. All right, well, let's see if these are gonna be long enough or I don't have to use the other ones. I got longer ones just in case, but uh, yeah, we'll see on that. The big socket wrench, here it is. I'm gonna run these in with the impact gun. I torque them down after the fact. I would like to reuse the factory bolts if I can because they have stop nuts. Well, they're flat stop flanged on both sides actually. It is. Okay, so <laughs> drop the nut. How'd that thing go? No. Drop the nut and have it fall somewhere, and it's right there. Sweet. Okay. My only concern, I know this will work here. My only concern at this point is that the bolts are going to be long enough to have enough threads on the nuts. Yes, they are. We are golden. Crank that nut down. And see, when I originally did the horn, I didn't want to really modify the bracket too much. Okay, I just dropped that nut, so it's right there. Don't ask me how I saw that, but it is right there. All right, let me reach behind here. Put that nut back into there. Okay, we'll put our bar back, and we can put our electrical line back onto here which just slides in and locks into place okay i'm going to take the impact gun i feel back there the okay that nut grabbed i'm not trying to hold the nut i'm just putting it there so that it it works okay and i think we'll be just fine here you may have to play around with this a little bit but I think we will be just fine. Let's grab the air horn. I got two ways I can do this. 
I could do it this way or I can run it upward and put the valve or I can spin around and put the valve facing up no I can't do that because these have to bolt it bolt and hold it into place yeah if I put the valve any other way it's not going to work but let's see here let's see how this is going to work bolted downward I may have to reconfigure these horns though so hold that thought I may have to run the bigger horn and yeah, see how that is uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the big guy take the little guy put the big guy on this side nope uh, what happened here? oh son of a bitch okay so I don't know why that stayed in there can I get that out? Do these come out? Yes, they do. Okay. So I may have an issue with that, but no. That comes out. Eh. Our rings can use a little oil, but it comes out. That'll go right there like that. We'll put the little one up top. Oh, I see where, where my problem is going to be. Okay, we have to go down more. Okay. So then, yeah, because we need to aim. I need to get away from this. And it's meant to swivel. I don't want to really mess with that. Okay, so we need to aim down a little bit more so that we clear this. Is it right now? Well, it's either that or aim up. Which one can I clear it with? That's a million dollar question. That's not going to clear, that's for sure. And neither is that one. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that one here. Put that one here. Oh wait, which one? Oh no, that is my baby guy. I'm like, hey, wait a minute, which one is my little guy? Little guy is this one. Yeah, that's gonna put us right there like that. Okay, so I'm gonna have to re-drill this hole. So that it fits we need to angle down and we've got about a little bit of play there we can play with or just a wee bit of play so let's get in here let's take that front bolt out that thing puts them on tighter and it takes them off let me get this guy don't ask me why I like these damn ratchets, but I do. It's either that or I'm going to have to get really creative with this damn thing. I don't want to cut too much of that away because these are our, our strength. So, let's see. Right now I can take this and go like that with it and that'll just give me an idea on where I can put everything. Is that lining up with a hole on there? Oh yeah, yeah, no, that bracket's not moving. Okay. So right there, 
So as much down as I can go with it. And the only dark question is, can I put this horn on there now? Nope, still gonna have an issue there. So we're in too close to this. Hood, it's a hood bracket. Great. All right, thought process time. This is already set for this, so I don't want to modify this at all. I twist it. Can I get that in there? I do that. I just don't want it to hit, though. Actually, wait a minute. <laughs> Thinking about this wrong now. What if I put a longer horn there? And I may actually clear that. Yeah, there we go. That'll clear it. It might rub on it, but that'll clear it. Okay. So I just need to re drill that hole there. For this so before I take this thing off let's uh, mark the bracket where this thing is and then we can we'll use that bolt there to hold it okay <laughs> battery died fun times so I've got one of these little guys, little marker. It's kind of like a colored pencil, very light. This one's silver, which is really good for black metal. So you can actually see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a mark there, mark here, and slight mark here. What that's gonna get me is where exactly this thing is. I've got another one that's got a red chalk on it. Uh, okay, let's let's do this. I'm gonna cheat on this one. I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do here. So I did figure out that the holes need to be about half inch. I had to come back in and um, drill it to half inch because these metric bolts are a little bit bigger than 3 8 They're 10 by 125s. Okay, so I need to re-undo my wire. It's got the little tab here. Pull it, pull it out and the slide off. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my bracket. I'll put it on here like so. This is why I made that mark. I'm going to line it up with that. I'm going to run this bolt in there nice and tight to hold it. Then I'm going to come from the back side with a drill bit and pre-start the hole, which will give me the exact center point where I need to be. And I need to line this up here right quickly. Okay, that should be it. These are locking bolts and nuts, so all I gotta do is just spin that thing down. Spin it down, but I need to hold this thing still. Keep it from moving. I mean, I guess I could just go and clamp it, but what's the fun in that?
nope, that's not gonna work. Just trying to make sure I'm dead on. Yep, we're perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna well I am gonna clamp it this time. However, I'm gonna clamp both of these together so that they stay where they're at. And I'm going to clamp. I'm not sure how the hell I'm gonna clamp that side. I need to clamp this side though. kind of in my way now. It's fine. Okay, let's torque that down. Make sure it doesn't spin on me. The clamp these two together over here. I'm gonna do the same thing. Make sure that doesn't spin. Gonna look underneath real quick, make sure we're still on target. Yes, we are. Okay, where's my drill bit case? Half inch bits already out. Here's the deal though. Half inch is not the size of these holes it's just a slight bit bigger which means unfortunately my bracket here is going to get a half inch and its hole is going to be widened a little bit too I don't have a metric size drill bit for this so the reason I'm doing that is So I get that center hole. This half inch bit isn't going to cut that. That's fine, I don't care if it does or not. I'm gonna take a quarter inch bit. Good quarter inch bit will go through steel without a pilot. I don't know if I have a good quarter inch, but we'll find out. This is where we, we're going through thick steel, so let's. That bit is just not really cutting it. Let's grab the other quarter inch I got, find out if it's any sharper. These are all in varying degrees of dullness. All right. I'll show you guys. There we go. About to show you guys what a homeboy drill press is, but uh, it doesn't look like we need to go there. Alright, that hole did kind of walk a little bit, so we're going to go back to our half inch bit and just try to chew it out with that. Doing it. I'm gonna take a little bit, throw a little bit more oil in there. All right, let's do the old uh, quick, easy, cheap, and dirty drill press. Got a drill. We need a press. Irwin. You know, lots of different brands. Some people's carrying. Uh, I think they're carrying. Freaking, uh, whatchamacallit nowadays. Um, 
I think they're carrying, what the hell is it? Um, DeWalt, yeah, I think that's where it is. Okay, so I just need to make sure that this stays off to the side a little bit. I don't drill into this. All right, we're about broke through. That's why she torqued on me. I'm gonna back her up. Okay, <laughs> let's get in here and do some cleanup. <sighs> Take that off there. That's why she torqued, because look, she grabbed the edge of that hole I had previously drilled. Too much about that. That one is torqued too tight, so I can't break it loose just yet. So when these are tight, just unscrew them a little bit. And they'll do that. <laughs> drop the shit right on your drop it right on you. you do that bolt. Okay, now you get in here and sand that side up. Do the same thing on this. I really can't get in there with that for the other point. I'm gonna take the file and just hit it with that real quick. It's because I don't like the sharp sharpness of that. Sometimes I take the time to just get really sharp parts, you know. Not really gonna hurt anybody. Still better just to kind of chamfer it and clean it up. Okay. <laughs> now that we have ground the paint off on our bracket, this is steel, it will rust. I need to paint that real quick or at least throw a tiny bit of paint on there. Um however that might be a problem, but let me see here. I got paint here somewhere. I got spray paint here somewhere. However, what I want to do before I do that, now here's spray paint. Before I do that, I'll tell you a little trick to making your paint dry fast. Heat stuff up. Okay, the bed's already black. I'm not going to worry too much about getting paint on the bed. It'll come off first time I tow something, anyways. So I'm going to take this torch and I'm just going to get this metal evenly. I'm going to heat up the area I want to paint. Remember, bolts are holding this stuff on, so then a little bit. You see when the metal starts to change color a little bit? It's hot. I'm gonna hit the back side a little bit. If this was aluminum, I would not be touching this right now. 
Okay. You can see it's kind of starting to steam a little bit because that's the paint that's already on there. You can see I've already changed the colors on it. Do that. Do that. And do that. And what'll happen is, instead of this paint taking four hours to dry, it'll actually dry within minutes. Oh, I can set it down. It'll dry, it'll dry rather quickly. Um, same thing with this. This is debating on it, but I don't have primer or silver. I'm not gonna heat there too much. This thing has to bend, be bend strength, so I don't want to take too much out of it. Just enough. This one here, I'm not going to be able to get it as hot as I got that other bracket. Just going to get it hot enough to help dry that paint rather quickly. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to hit the black. The reason for that is because that's the only paint I have. And I tell you this much, if you warm your parts up before you paint them, this stuff dries like almost instantly. And I said almost. I mean, it's not instant dry. Trying to get in there because what's going to happen is this is going to start to rust. I'm trying to avoid that. Okay. I need to now hang this because if I set it down, the paint's going to get messed up on it. So I'm going to take my pin here. And I'm going to put it through this hole and just kind of hold it like that. There we go. Okay, once this is done, ready to go, we'll come back and bolt everything in. Okay, we're back at it. My uh, heated up trick actually worked out pretty well because this paint's already pretty much dry. Um, I'm not really going for paint job of the year here. Just trying to get it so that it covers it up so it doesn't rust. All right, so. <laughs> My other guy. Alright, so let's get this guy back into place here. Um, well, I guess first things first. Let's, uh, let's make life a little easy on ourselves. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. <laughs> this is why I'm saying easy on ourselves. I'm sitting there trying to humper around a wheel. <laughs> New word I just made up, humper. Uh, trying to get in around the wheel. And I can just move it out and that will open up the space I need to. Uh, oh, sorry. Excuse me. That will open up the space I need. I took the liberty to kind of clean some of that rust off and just throw a cheap, quick little coat of paint on the frame so that it. Uh, is it, you know, it gets, get, just get rid, just to get rid of the rust. Uh, I just drank that bit of Dr. Pepper, all of a sudden it got a bit, a bit gassy there. Okay, so, what I'll do, consider that hole should work now. And this is a flange bolt, so it's still going to hold this. I mean, I could put a washer if I want. Main part is, is I've got a good solid bracket to hold these horns. Still a little worried about that 
um, hood shock, but I think we'll be okay. There, I just need to get this nut started. Okay, that one started. This other one started. And I'll need to check the wire as well as check the air line to make sure. Because when this thing came off, it was still connected. But it obviously blew out the air line, so I don't know where that happened. And I can't reuse the airline until I know where the where the problem spot is. What I'll probably have to do is just uh, hook it up, put some pressure to it, and see from there where it's leaking from. Uh, okay, you got it zip tied. It's worried about it. I told him zip tie it up. That'll keep it from doing anything we don't want it to do. All right. All right. Okay, now let me go get the bolts for the trumpets. Those are for this horn, these are these. Each bolt has a washer and a lock nut. These things are monstrous. That's what they decided to use. I think I was using this socket, yeah. Using that socket. Worst case comes to it, I may bend the end of the trumpet just to get it away from the uh, this. But I think we'll be okay. On that, why is that loose? Oh, it's just loose because it has to turn. Okay. I was like, hmm. 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 All right. So, lighting might be kind of crappy right now. All right. I'm gonna use the big one because that's the one I figured will clear that the best. Yeah. yeah. I figured the big one going in here will be the best one to do it. I'm going to uh, I was gonna say I'm gonna tighten that in there by hand. Maybe I should put some oil on that, I don't know. Alright, let's put that in there. Alright. I may Put a piece of rubber around that. That might fix that problem. All right, let's put the little one down here. Get a washer. See, now that's hitty on that though, so I don't know. That's a great idea. Well. Nope. That's not cross threading. Just trying to make sure that these go in there just right. There's our last trumpet. I don't know if I'll be able to get this in there or if I'll have to use the socket wrench. I have to use the socket wrench. Don't know yet, but we will find out. I see something here. Why are these things in a pan the butt? Well, they're not really a pan the butt. A little tight, but not a pan in the butt. No. These are made out of aluminum, so I'm not sure if it's just angle with the dangle here or what. There it goes. All right, let's get our impact gun in there. Last one, nice and tight. Okay. So what that's hitting is actually just that bolt. I think what I may do is just put a piece of rubber, a piece of rubber on the back side of this. And that'll kind of fix that problem. Okay, so now we need to hook up our valve and our airline 
Do I want to put the double trumpet back on here? Well, I probably should. Seeing as the air valve was set up for two of these. Fun times, you know. All right. There's the double. Double's right here. Okay. So, I can go at this a couple of ways, but I think the easiest way to do this is to just put this here like this. Actually, <laughs> let's just do this. Take these two off. I mean, this adds that little bit of character to the horn. These two off. And we're going to put these two right about there. Let's see if that will. Uh, I can't see that mark for anything. Okay, so let's. Uh, I have that or I need to kill off that valve. Oh, shit. Hey, you know what? Let's take the doubles out. What I'll do is instead I'll just uh, pipe off or uh, cap off that end of the valve. In fact, I could probably just go direct into this thing. I do need to drill a spot though bolt that uh, flange on to but in here I have I'll go through my little thing of stuff here let's see if I have a size of fitting just need something to plug it for now I don't have just a regular nipple so um, I still need to use the T so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this off actually what I'll probably do is just get a pipe plug I want to still use this uh, this T section. Okay, so the way these curb jaw deals work is take it, clamp it on to what you're working on. This is brass, so you don't need to clamp very hard. And I'll take these ones and do the same thing. <laughs> Long video, huh? All right. Spin a couple more time on my jiggers. Got sockets. I mean, I could put a socket on it. Typically how I put these in, I just put a socket on them. <laughs> that was kind of crazy having five horns though it was kind of loud but I'm piping it with 3 8 lines so it's gonna be pretty loud already okay so put that guy on there like that for right now I'll probably just uh, clamp that on there after the fact clean this stuff off let's put some new Teflon tape on there Okay, so trick is you want this piece that you break off go in the direction opposite of the rotation and then go from the back side here so that way you can kind of pull it tight. Um, you need to get started. Now this stuff won't stick to the pipe, it sticks to itself. So you got to get it started. Yeah, let's see, I already kind of screwed that up. All right, let's do this. Just tear a piece off. This is pipe tape, or what is commonly referred to as Teflon tape. 
So once you get a wrap around and you can kind of pull it tight, you know, do about three wraps. There's three. Just break it off. That way, when it goes in there, it'll be fine. And then I need to tap on that piece. That's the one that's going into the horn. Although no air is going anywhere until the valve opens. I will have to, however, bolt that guy on. So I'll still have to drill a hole for that. But right now I need to figure out where my air leak is anyways. So let's get into doing that real quick. These do come off, but they're not that great to get off. So I'm not going to try to take them off. What I will do, however, since I didn't tighten it down, is I'll take the coil out. Just make it kind of easy to spin this thing in there. It's a magnetic valve. When that coil activates, it creates magnetic uh, energy and causes this to open and close. So I'm just going to spin it in there until it's snug by hand. And then what I'll do is Actually, I'll just do it by hand. Remember, there's no pressure on the other side of this. So, that should be good right there. That's angling back. Kind of where I want the airline to come in. It's right about there. So now I'll take my airline fitting. Actually, what I'll do for this is find a socket that fits it. Kind of loose, just right. Okay, and I'll use, I don't know where the hell I put the other socket wrench, so I'll use this one. Like I said, usually I install these with a wrench, socket wrench, it just makes it easier, even pressure all the way around, and in this case, because I'm also up against the edge of the horn, it makes it easier to turn that without too much issue. Now, you don't crank these things down until they're ridiculously tight, you just need to get it snug enough that it doesn't leak. The reason I say that is, is because if I crank down too much on that, I'll inadvertently snap that T, which is nothing more than brass. Okay, and right there, that looks good. Let's put my coil back on. Where is the Lock nut, lock nut's right there. Now everything's gonna go towards the back of this, so I'll put the coil facing the back too. And I'm not gonna run anything up here, because that might get hot. And I'm just going to lightly snug this with the ratchet. No, don't want to go too crazy with this because you could break the coil. Just want it to be enough that I know that doesn't. It's not going to come loose. Okay, now here's my airline came off I'm gonna need to get past these zip ties I still want to know where this line got messed up I don't I got lucky and it's not <laughs> ah okay there it is right there well, actually it wasn't that bad it just hit the ground and ground that off so I just need to trim that piece off and then we're good I need to drill one little hole there for the bolt or for the uh, <laughs> one little hole for the bolt and nut that holds the ground wire and then probably be all right um, needs to be quarter inch no oh, I need to lock down that uh, fitting to needs to be a quarter inch hole and we're going to use well it looks like we're 
we're just gonna use one of these. I don't see anything else here to use. Well, the upside of having that thing bolted to itself was kept it from uh, ripping the wires off. Okay, so still need to tighten up the uh, the little valve I got here, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's get the hole drilled for the ground. Uh, it's probably right here off to this side. This one here I can do faster speed on the bit. problem with drilling holes when you have fresh paint is it scratches up your paint job oh well I wasn't really caring too much about that paint you can see right One here that back off I'm not gonna worry about the bird because that will help us ground even better and we'll feed that bolt through like that I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put one nut on there to start with and I'm gonna lock it down to the frame of this and then As soon as I can get to it. <laughs> That's that fitting I need to tighten up. I'm just trying to see if I can get this wrench all the way in there. I think this wrench is too big for this job. <sighs> Wee bit big for this job. <laughs> there's, a, there's no pressure to that though unless the horn valve is active. So I think we'll be okay there. Like I said, I'm just going to leave it for now until I can go get a uh, pipe plug, and then I'll plug it. Now that's right up against the horn body, so I'm going to leave that there for right now because that's keeping me from keeping this thing from moving. All right, we're getting it. We're getting it. Just a little more. Call that good enough, and then I can just swing that back. There we go. All right, so, well, real quick, take these out of here, take this stuff out of here. I need to find a socket for the 7 16 nut. Yeah, it's too big, yeah, it's definitely too big. Okay, and I need to get one more of these uh, lock washers. There we go. Okay, so I'll grab the other bolt here, and we're using a socket. I'm not sure what socket I'm using. Using a socket. You find something that's kosher to seven sixteenths, I guess. <laughs> uh, Do we? Oh yeah, yeah. I pulled this out. I don't think I have a long socket, but might be able to get away with one of these at 7 16 Unless I find something that's longer, then I'll use that. Um, I think that's what we're going to have to do. Let's see what I got here, if any of this stuff works. And nope. <laughs> so it shall be this one 
may have to get a wrench. Yeah, may have to get a wrench. But for right now, I can zip that thing tight on the side. Drill bit. You guys probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm reaching in with the uh, good old channel lock and snapping the bolt right off. <laughs> mm. Awesome. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Oh, hey, you know what? <laughs> Held it. <laughs> I now have a shorter quarter inch bolt <laughs> that I can use. Mm-hmm. And see, I was sitting here worried about how I was going to shorten this thing up. I'll snap it short. How about that? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, you know what? No, let's let's keep it that way because I want it to kind of bite through that paint a little bit when I go to tighten it up. Get on there! Come on! What's going on here? Ah! <laughs> Probably help if uh, took that out of there. go and now we should be good to use um, we should I need to go find another nut real quick find a nut can't get anything done unless you got a nut you gotta have a nut could have used those too uh, eh, should have would have could have but I didn't, so using what I'm using. All right. For some reason this thing is burred pretty well. It's okay. I'm gonna aim that at the nut, and I'm gonna put the wire on there. Okay, so now I put the wire on there. Ground wire. Rotate them inward. I like to kind of have things a little bit clean. Alright. One washer. One lock nut. This keeps me from spinning the terminal on there. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. I can't see what I'm doing either. It's just doing it all by feel right now. Alright. And Let's uh, just give it a couple of chooses. All right, there we go. That's good enough. All right, now I need to find that razor blade I grabbed. I need to cut these two zip ties. We're put onto here because we had to tie this thing up. Careful not to cut my actual air brake line. That would be a bad day. Okay, now, typically I would run this over the top of here and into here. Now, I obviously left enough uh, air line to do that. Um, however, what I'm probably going to do is just run this behind here. Well, we run this over here into uh, just whip it up, run it like that into here. Yeah, I'll go with that, and then we'll be fine. Okay. All right. So I need to cut this bad piece off. So when it hit the ground, it rubbed right here, and it blew a hole right into that. It's a good thing about these push-in fittings is. All you got to do is just cut the bad section off, 
push in a new piece and then you're good to go I'm going to take that off there and I'm just going to make sure this is kind of cleaned up you want to kind of cut these things I'm going to have the edges kind of cleaned up a little bit uh, if you get leaks on these, a little trick I like to do is take them out and put WD-40 right there on the fitting. And that tends to fix that. Alright, so, push to connect fittings, have a collar on the back, and you take the line, and you shove it in there. And it should lock itself into place. Generally, they go in about a quarter inch. Alright, so that's locked in there. Let's get our wire connected. So we got that right here. Okay. And that should do it. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, thinking to myself, I should zip tie that wire. One of the good things about this post is Without having a zip tie on there, it didn't rip the wire off. Uh, you know what? What I can do here is just take this. I'm going to probably zip tie this thing up anyways. But I can just take the wire, wrap it around. You know what? No. Oh, screw it. We'll do that and then we'll zip tie it. Because we have this excess here, I don't want to zip tie this off anyways. But I actually kind of think we're okay. I just we are covered with the uh, with the plastic here pretty well. Just trying to make sure it's not going to rub on anything. Um, yeah, I think we'll be all right. Okay, says I can bring it up here like that, or just like that. Yeah, I think it's fine. All right. Well. Now we need to leak test it before we put everything back together. In order to do that, I can roll this bed back or I can just do this. Probably easier, I just slide under it. You're gonna go with me. Right here is my air tank that that line is connected to and here's the valve. And I don't hear no air leaks. Well, I'm here, I might as well hit the water valve. The water. I haven't hit that in a while. So don't really mess with those too much because it has an air dryer. Pretty much gets rid of most of that wire or water. Alright. Don't hear no air leaks here. Uh, let's see if we have any soap bubbles. Just for shits and giggles. Um... Uh, soap bubbles and let's see do I have a flashlight I need a flashlight for this here's a flashlight okay so let's get up in here the soap soap and water and I just want to hit the inlet parts of the air fittings um, gonna hit the hose goes in just to see if there's anything leaking form pretty quickly so I think we're good okay now for the fun part well let's put the uh, shield back on real fast then we're gonna have the fun part fun part is that 13 or was I just using this one well, that is a 13 wait a minute I have a 12 Pretty sure it's not 716s. Let me go see that 12 is back there before I let's put the shield back on. I mean, other than a ground problem, possibly uh, from the painted metal, we should be fine. No, not that one. So, I guess I was using a 13, huh? Well, now that I have the actual socket set out, let's just grab a 12. There it is. There's our 12. 
when you're doing with the metric stuff, you gotta kinda kinda be right on it. Okay, let's pull that out there. Let's grab that. And yeah, it's gonna be a problem. I just swore the 12 I had was not a small one. I don't know. Oh no, that's a 14. Okay, a 12 is small. And then that's an adapter to go to 3 8. Okay. Problem time, solution time. If you got a problem, I got a solution. Solution is change the uh, chuck adapter that these things are on. I don't really want to feel like stripping nuts today. I kind of swear I had a 12 though. Not sure what I did with it. That's okay. It's okay. Alright, so before I get too crazy with myself, I need to put these two nuts back onto the radiator support bracket. Now they use these things which kind of grab on the edges, kind of like a Nord lock, but not exactly a Nord lock. Alright, we're going to put that on there. Now we're going to take our shield, let's put that back in here. I believe that goes over the top of this into here. Just like that. There we go. Let's get one up top here real fast. As soon as I can find a hole. Anybody comments? I have no problem in that department. Normally. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm going to get this video demonetized too. Okay, so when you go to start these things off with an impact gun, you want to make sure that they're threading correctly, that you don't force the threads. And the reason that is, is because you could accidentally uh, thread them wrong. Cause the holes to get messed up. I'm hearing that. I don't think we have a uh, problem with the. We have a rattlesnake issue. We don't typically have rattlesnakes here in California, but again, you never know. Okay, so one trick with these is leave them loose until have them all in. That way, if you've got to align things, it helps a little bit. All right, so it's right there, but it's just kind of in a wee bit. I'm not sure why that one, oh, okay, it's out a little bit. There it goes. May not be able to hit this one with the gun. I may just have to do this one by hand. Just trying to feel to get the thread started. There it goes. I may just have to get a ratchet onto that. You see. <laughs> That might be a bit of a problem. <laughs> All right, zap these up. I'll hit that one. Again. All right. These don't need to be cut. They're just holding a piece of plastic. All right, let's get that socket onto there. I can spin that by hand most of the way, and then I'll get a ratchet. Finish that off. And I still need to find a piece of rubber to put around that because I don't want that. It's not so much it's going to do any damage, but it's going to be dinging <laughs> constantly. That could be an issue. Let's 
Let's see if I can get on this now. Now that's up more. No, I'm not gonna be able to get on that. Okay. <sighs> get a ratchet. That's gonna be a long video. Mm, do a bunch of editing. Oh well. This is what it is. Quarter drive. Which means quarter drive ratchet. Alright, now it's test fire time. I would like it if this wasn't all twisted up like that. But you know, it's got to suck air from somewhere. I'll get that, I'll do the rubber on that later. Probably get a piece of, uh, I don't know yet. Let's get that. look and see what's going on in here. Okay, that's not hitting nothing. I just don't think it's settled down, but let's. Look to make sure I didn't leave any tools up here. Okay, no tools. All right, the other side's hitting. That's what it is. Well, I guess you can't have the door open. Down, okay. There's that. Get this one closed off. Okay, now, the fun. See if it works. And I wanted to finish everything up. I'm pretty sure to work. Like I said, the only thing I have to worry about is the ground. Right, so we're up and running. We see it feels good. We're at about 110. Just looking for any drop air pressure. Just kind of doing a bleed down test. Compressor hasn't kicked in yet. Needle's at 110. Uh, and that's running off of my auxiliary tank, which is my rear tank. So, I don't see anything. It's not moving at all. Alright. Okay. Compressor kicked in. Let's take a gander at something here real quick. I heard something knock. No, okay, that's not gonna be in the way of that. So the pancakes for the air front air brakes. Alright, so I'm gonna fill up our tank because it goes up to about 130. get maximum chooch on this air horn. 125, 130. 110. There it is. It's about 130 almost. Alright. There it is. Works flawlessly. Great. Perfect. Alright guys. It's been a long video. Thanks for sticking in there. If you made it to this point, I appreciate it. Until next time, y'all have a good one out there. Be safe, and I'll see you on the next one.